this video, I want to talk about Chris Foca from Cornell, who placed third at NCAAs in the 174 pound weight class. Foca finished the season with a record of 30 and 2, with his only losses coming against NCAA champs Carter Starachi and Makai Lewis. Foca was not someone on my radar going into the tournament, but boy did he impress, going 5 and 1 with two pins in a very competitive weight class. A well rounded wrestler, he displayed strong counter offense and an ability to turn guys and get out from bottom effectively. To win the third place match, he needed to escape from bottom within 12 seconds against the very tough Makai Lewis, which he did in impressive fashion. Both of Foca's pins came from the same whip over variation that he calls the Navigator. Unlike a traditional whip over where the opponent's head is generally up, Foca hits the Navigator with the opponent's head trapped underneath his chest. Here the opponent attacks a double, Foca gets his left arm inside, punches the underhook, controls the far tricep, pivots and rotates the opponent to his back. Because the opponent's head was buried, Foca is able to keep it elevated off the mat and trapped in his armpit as he continues to control the underhook and tricep. This results in the opponent getting stuck in the position with a limited ability to turn in or away or bridge out. As the opponent begins to free his right arm, Foca steps over to the other side, maintains control of the head and uses his body positioning to help trap the opponent's right arm in place to immobilize him. On that last point, we saw Wyatt Hendrickson end up in a similar position when he pinned Tony Cassiope. That one came off a lat whip and once that head and arm position gets locked in, the opponent has a very difficult time moving in either direction. We also saw Matt Ramos pull off the upset with the Navigator. More on that a bit later. Now let's take a step back, because before I saw Foca do this move, I had thought a whip over with an opponent's head trapped underneath was a good way to get exposure in freestyle, but not necessarily a great option in folk style because of the roll through possibility. To illustrate the roll through from the whip over, check out this clip with Hassan Yazdani. Yazdani counters the opponent's shot with a whip over but notice as the opponent gets rotated over his back, he manages to roll through and actually come up on a front headlock. While this sequence is worth 4 blue in freestyle for feet to back exposure, it would be worth nothing in folk style and would actually be a net negative with the end position of being stuck in a front headlock. Similar situation with the whip over leading to a roll through in these clips. After looking at these roll throughs further and comparing it to the clips of Foca hitting the technique, I now believe that the key to the roll through is not really the opponent's head being buried, but rather the positioning and control of the opponent's arm opposite the underhook side. In each clip, as the opponents are driven over their back, the thrower loses control of the tricep and the opponents are able to bring that arm past the thrower's body to help rotate their back off the ground. Now contrast that with Foca's control of that far arm. Unlike in the prior clips, Foca manages to keep that arm trapped in the pocket of his right hip, which prevents the opponent from freeing it and rolling through. Said another way, when the opponent's left arm in this case gets jammed up and wedged in place, it totally shuts down his ability to continue rolling to his right and escaping the position. The underhook control makes it very difficult for the opponent to turn inward and the head control makes it difficult to bridge. In the second example, the opponent attacks a single, then attempts to build his base back up in a way that makes him vulnerable to being rotated to his left. Foca digs the left underhook, controls the far tricep, pivots, rotates the opponent to his back, and importantly, keeps the opponent's left arm trapped against the right side of Foca's body preventing any roll through possibility. At this point, the opponent cannot turn away cannot turn in, and cannot bridge. Checkmate. It's worth pointing out that what facilitates Foca being able to get both opponents' left arms trapped is that they had their left arms extended, trying to attack Foca's right leg. 
That arm extension gave Foka the space to get his hips in the opponent's armpit space between their left elbows and their rib cages, which in turn allowed him to keep their arms trapped in his hip pocket. This point brings us back to the upset by Matt Ramos against Spencer Lee. As Ramos initiates the head pinch style turn, Lee holds onto a body lock, and Ramos grabs a right underhook, which he uses to help drive Lee to his back. Now watch Lee's other arm, which Ramos controls at the tricep and traps at his left hip pocket as he gets his hips into Lee's armpit space. Just like we saw with Foka's opponents, once here, Lee cannot turn in, cannot turn away, and cannot effectively bridge with his head elevated off the ground. Like we saw in the first Foka clip, Ramos eventually switches to the other side to help stabilize the position and get the pin. Lee's major blunder, in my view, was that he stubbornly held onto his body lock after getting rolled over and gave Ramos the ability to punch the right underhook and secure Lee's right arm in his hip pocket. Even if Lee gives up the underhook, a quick slip of his right forearm to the other side of Ramos's body here may have facilitated a roll through. But Lee held on, and the price was fatal. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you'd like to support my work, please consider signing up for Patreon or YouTube memberships. Members get access to exclusive content, including a number of move compilation videos from the recent NCAAs. Take care.